Hi Sagittarius, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is your bi-weekly reading, which has now been changed because it's been a little bit late. I'm going to make it February 7th to the 28th. So this is February 7th to the 28th. This is an hour-long general reading, so whatever comes up for Sagittarius comes up. Okay, let's get right into it. I'm going to use the Goddess Tarot by Chris Walder, the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle Deck by Alana Fairchild, the Divine Feminine Oracle Cards by Megan Watterson, the Wisdom of the Oracle Oracle Cards by Colette Baron reed the Crystal Reading Cards by Rochelle Sharman, then there's Denise Lynn's Sacred Traveler, Angela Hartfield's Whispers of Love, and the Romance Angels by Doreen Virtue. As you guys can see, I've made a little bit of changes here. I've got all my crystals outside charging. I like to charge them in the new moon for three days of the new moon. Because I am moon in Aries and I like to get all that new moon energy because it's literally Popeye on spinach with the new moon. You might not be able to tell right now because I'm just kind of pulling an all-nighter sort of. Well, not really. I'm, I'm up past my bedtime. I just did uh, Pisces, and now I'm doing Sagittarius, and then I think I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to show those just too much. This is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th. Please, can we get a positive reading for Pisces, whatever they need to know? Sorry, for Sagittarius. Erase that. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th. Can we please get a positive reading for Sag? For whatever they need to know. What's going on with Sagittarius? Let's see. In the form of a Celtic cross, please. <clears throat> for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th. Also, I have a monthly... Love reading already posted for Sagittarius for February, so please check that out. I'll link it at the end of the video so you can look for that, or you could just search it in my video playlist. Also, I've got a couple of tarot haul videos where I picked up some crystals and tarot decks. Please feel free to check those out as well. All right, this is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For February 7th to the 28th. What's going on for Sag? I'm going to end the shuffle. Oh, why not? Let's just shake it up a bit. A bit of a mixy mix. What's going on for Sag? What's going on for Sag? Sagittarius, Sun, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, February 7th to the 28th. <clears throat> Alright. On the bottom, we've got Queen of Cups. Situation, we have Four of Pentacles. Challenge is Nine of Wands. Consciously, we've got Six of Pentacles. Foundation, we've got the Devil card with Temptation. On the recent past, we got Princess of Swords, like the Knight of Swords. Recent future, we got the Ace of Pentacles. You right now, Seven of Wands. Around you, got Two of Cups. Hopes and Fears, the Star. The Outcome, Ten of Cups, Sagittarius. Well, look at that. Happily ever after. Look at you, Queen of Cups. That's the completion of the cups. That's the completion of the cups. Two completion of the cup card. So you got love. Look at this. You got around you two of cups. This is true love. Happily ever after. Sagittarius, whoever this is, picking up wonderful energy. But let's see where this goes. In this stuff right over here. <clears throat> you got four pentacles in the situation. Off the bat... We see three pentacles, some wands, two of them, lots of cups, one, two, three, but they're like the best ones, really. It's amazing. 
I mean, if you had Ace of Cups, it would be the full shebang. Princess of Swords, like the Knight of Swords energy in the recent past. So the Swords energies are not causing much drama here. And then you've got the Star, the Fate card, and you've got Temptation at the bottom. Looks like a great balanced read. Let's find out more. Four of Pentacles in the situation. It speaks to having accrued a certain amount of wealth, established yourself, where now you're kind of in this miserly um, stingy Scrooge kind of mode where you are pinching pennies, um, being a little bit ungen not, not generous. Okay. A little bit closed off, unreceptive where you're holding on to the things that you have so tightly that you're not able to invest or invest in people. It's a very, um, kind of being a penny pincher, being a little bit cheap kind of environment, uh, energy, okay? Withholding resources or, or means, not willing to share, not willing to invest, um, distrustful of other people around you, thinking that they want something from you, okay? That they, some, they want some of your coins. Now, the challenge here is the nine of staves, which is the nine of wands. And nine of wands is all about, it's a wounded warrior card. So this person is vigilant and they're guarding everything that they've worked hard for. Um, they're defensive <clears throat> and they're this, it's this energy of uh, feeling like you have to keep guard because at any moment, you know, somebody might come for something that you have, okay, that you're protecting. In the foundation, you've got the temptation, the devil card with this goddess here. It says, Nai Loro Kidul. This is um, a mermaid sea goddess energy from uh, Java, Indonesia. And this is at the foundation. This is your subconscious, your hidden feelings down here. So crowning this is the nine of wands, this defensiveness. Why? I see four pentacles and when I see the devil, I see greed. Okay. I feel like in the pentacles front, as far as your finances go, it looks like you are in a situation involving greed and uh, materialism. Um, this also speaks to addictions because of the devil card in the traditional tarot, um, control issues and ego. So it could be those things too. It could be also trying to, because of this devil energy it's a negative energy it's something that is controlling it's something that is a fake card it's a major arcana card meaning major secrets so this card and the one over here are going to play a strong role for the period of february 7th to the 28th everything else is pretty much free everything else is free will and looks fantastic it's just that you have to watch out for this energy here at your subconscious something is playing on your ego and you're giving in to your ego and control issues or um, addictions to maybe dependencies that you have around you. Um, it looks to me like, you know, if I have to take a quick glimpse, this kind of miserly kind of energy, a little bit of like a greedy energy here, feeling defensive. Both of these cards are feelings of defensiveness, okay? And the reason why is because at the foundation, You've got this devil card. It's called temptation, okay, in this deck. Um, because this goddess used to kind of, uh, if anybody swam in her waters, like she would collect humans to be servants in her watery realm, okay? And when I see that card and I see six of pentacles in the conscious, this rich, regal-looking woman in the middle, and then these two women who are um, at her attendants or her, you know, uh, servants, whichever it may be, or it could be family or, you know, friends or whoever, partners. They're not partners, but, you know, somebody who's, it's a card of dependency, okay? It's a card of also reciprocity and generosity and giving and receiving where there's benefit for both parties, the one who's giving because they're able to um, accumulate good karma and the receiving end, they're benefiting because they're getting actual help that they need. Now, on a lower vibration, and I'm going to take it at a lower vibration, is because I see the devil card at the foundation, and I see these two defensive cards, and this card speaking to stinginess. 
So I feel like there's a control factor here. When you're holding on to your coin so tight and you're distrusting of anybody, it's, you have to overcome. This is your challenge. This wounded warrior, because of something that's happened in the past has left you distrustful and closed off, you are, you know, in this kind of very holding your coins tight, being miserly. Consciously, you're thinking, you know, you're being generous and that you're giving to people, whoever it is around you that is dependent on you and that, you know, you're being of service to them and um, you're doing a good thing. But really, in the base here, the foundation, it's like it looks like it's a control ego thing as well, okay, involved in this, which could speak to possibly exploitation over here, okay? Um, so let's keep going. In the recent past, you've got Princess of Swords, like the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is someone who is, first of all, an air sign, could be representing Gemini, Libra, Aquarius as a person. Um, also someone who's youthful and unattached, okay? It doesn't have to be a child or something, but just someone who hasn't been um, married yet as a person. It also speaks to, as an energy, a communication coming in, um, about the swords represent the intellect, thought, information, processing information, the mind, messages. So this knight of swords is someone who comes in very quickly and there's an ambition, um, ambitious kind of element to the knight of swords, a kind of uh, feeling of someone who goes in for the challenge, someone who speaks very directly uh, lower vibration could be almost a little bit abusive in the way, a little bit ag overly aggressive uh, in the way they deliver their message or what they're trying to relay, the information they're trying to relay. In the recent future, this Ace of Pentacles, some new opportunity that's going to present itself. Um, anything of the material world. The Pentacles can relate to anything from a healthy body to a new job to a new home. A relocation okay a new career a new relationship something that comes into your life okay I feel like it's a new relationship because then I see all these cups right so you're going from a very stingy egocentric kind of energy here and then it looks like in the recent past you went after something okay this knight of swords is also like since we see love and romance in love and romance the knight of swords is also someone who goes in um, to a relationship kind of like it's a challenge they want to win the most attractive you know person that everybody else wants to get with kind of it's coming from an intellectual kind of egoic kind of um, place as opposed to from the heart kind of right in the in the past in the recent past um, and then you get this opportunity this new opportunity that presents itself but you right now, that's in the recent future. You right now, seven of staves, seven of wands. This is the hero card. Seven of wands is about being able to um, stand up for yourself and face any opposition and come out victorious. Um, this is also a card about blocking. Like, as, as is the four of pentacles, you know, this is like... A physical manifestation of blocking other people from getting to you and this is like a um, a material and spiritual kind of um, blocking because you're not receptive you shut off you're closed it's like you shut down shop and this one is like you're effectively blocking others from coming at you because you have your wand in your hand there so this could speak to either you know competitive interest there or or not even maybe possibly even feeling like people are trying to challenge you you know it's more of this nine of wands defensive energy but here it's slackened up a bit and you feel like you have you're not so wounded as you were back in the situation you right now so you're coming out of it kind of this energy of being able to overcome the opposition around you there's two of cups there's true love Two of Cups is a partnership, okay, first of all. Now, I could take it just as a work partnership or something if it's related to Pentacles. But because I see Ten of Cups and I see the Queen of Cups, I feel like it's a, a romantic love. So it should be interesting to see what romantic cards you pull up for the Oracle cards. But um, I see Two of Cups here, and that speaks to kind of soulmate union. And I believe there's lots of different types of soulmates. Someone who... 
um, you, you know, both people have their cup in hand and they're both coming sincerely and entering into the relationship, you know, open and receptive. It's a completely different energy from the Four of Pentacles. Now, in your hopes and fears, you've got the Star card. This is a major arcana card, major influence, because it's a major secrets card, which is wonderful because this Star card is influencing you. It's kind of, it seems like it's dragging you out of this kind of closed off, stingy energy into being open and receptive and getting um, the happily ever after with a true love scenario, okay? The star card is about somebody wishing for something um, and having the strength and resilience and the hope and the faith, hope and faith, hope and faith, to wait for what they want. Um, actively pursuing it, but not like in an aggressive way anymore. This is something where you might have to, it might take a while to come to fruition, this relationship, but you're willing and you're able to um, see it through, hang in until it does, you know, manifest. Also, it could speak to somebody who is very much in the spotlight, gets a lot of attention, okay? Outcome is Ten of Cups. This is the happily ever after. This is complete fulfillment. This is having um, everything that you ever wanted out of a relationship. Complete fulfillment, whatever that is to you. Now, some people might be, you know, marriage and uh, home and children and everything. And for others, it could be other things, you know, that make them have their Ten of Cups. But generally speaking, it is, you know, having the whole nine yards. Okay, marriage, kids, house, land, all that. You got Queen of Cups on the bottom, and this is someone who's, it's a completion of the cups. So you got two completions of the cups. This is someone who is, has mastered the emotion. Someone who is spiritual, intuitive, psychic, looks for the deeper meaning in life, and a healer type. Okay, let's just take a peek underneath. There's more water energy with the Six of Swords. This is leaving a sad situation, going across water to a new land, and making a fresh start because there was some kind of hostility or conflict where you were before. And then there's that stability, marriage, rite of passage, Four of Wands. Right? The Four of Wands is about reunions, gatherings, Weddings, could you even be meeting somebody at a wedding? This is something about in, um, good times where the family life is stable, it's a firm foundation, and uh, you're able to even have gatherings and family and reunions and everything um, because you have a stable life, stable, happy family. And look at that, like it couldn't get any better. You've got the Four of Wands and the Sun card. It says the Zoria. I guess uh, these three ladies, yeah, these goddesses. And the sun is about success, joy, completion, happiness, clarity, seeing everything as it truly is and not uh, any kind of uh, illusion. So I'm going to leave it there. This is beautiful cards. Looks like when you leave a sad situation, you meet somebody it's a new relationship that's coming into your life, and it's your happily ever after. It's everything you ever wanted. So I'm going to leave it there. Take one more peek. Eight of Pentacles. That's, again, now that it leaves you, maybe it's because you get so happy. Eight of Pentacles is now about work. This, Whereas all of this has been about romance and love. Then it leads you to Eight of Pentacles now. That's mastering your craft. And you see this woman painting. She's got all these different... Um, paint palettes over here, different colors, and she's got the paintbrushes over here, and she's painting a pentacle. Eight of Pentacles is all about manifesting by, you know, mastering your craft, late nights at the office, working hard, making sure that you um, have mastered your craft. In love and romance, it's about being humble, um, giving and giving and taking, and you know, kind of compromise. Uh, humility, chivalry, gallantry, and love. Okay, so it's a beautiful card, Sagittarius. You guys get the best readings all the time. All right, let's pull some Oracle cards. This is the Wild Kuan Yin. Okay, please get one card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February. Uh, that's it. 
Grandmother of Love, Granddaughter of Life. Let's read it. On the bottom, you got Fearless. So let me get that. Okay. Number three. It says, let me see. You are an old soul with much wisdom in you. You know how to learn from experience and grow stronger and more loving, even though, even through life's challenges. Trust yourself and life. You are going, growing now towards your divine destiny. You may need guidance to find your way through unfamiliar situations as you broaden your horizons now. Allow these... Now where am I? Allow those who are wise like you to be your companions as you choose not to believe in the voices of fear. All right. It says, in a reading, something new wants to happen. It sure does. There's a new relationship. Something new wants to happen. This is healthy and to be encouraged. Do not be scared to do things differently now. Do not be scared to break new ground. Rely on your intuition and instincts, even if your mind is afraid because it doesn't feel uh, in control of the process. No matter how old you are or how young, no matter what age, stage in life you may think you are supposed to be at, you are being asked to clear your mind of such expectations or judgments and instead just love who you are and where you are in your life. This is your unique journey. Any belief that you cannot or should not follow your dreams because of age, roles, gender, or religious background, or any other issue are to be put aside now. It is never too late to begin something. It is never too late to finish something. It is never too late to forgive. It is never too late to decide to just be happy in the moment and free yourself from past judgment, pain, or suffering. It is never too late. If you have been suffering from fatigue or depression, feeling overwhelmed with responsibility or burned out, feeling old before your time, so to speak, then this oracle also brings a message to take some time to replenish yourself by connection with the child within. This may be through play, breaking your routine, or exploring a new place. All right, it says, give yourself permission to wobble. The cult, who will become a swift and sure-footed stallion, will still need to go through having an ungainly wobble before it gets used to its legs. In the bigger scheme of things, those wobbles, as humiliating or challenging as they may seem in the moment, shall only be a small sentence, not even a whole paragraph or chapter in the greater story of your soul. When you are wobbling, you are growing into something you've not done before. This is brave. Be proud even of your stumbles, for they are a part of your success, and you have great potential for success in this lifetime. So go on and grow. All right. Next, we're going to pull a Divine Feminine Oracle card by Megan Watson. Let me get that out. Can we please get one card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th, please? Too many. Too many after again. Okay, so we will pull on the bottom, Lalita, the red goddess, playfulness is a spiritual power, laughter leads me back to the light. You guys always get this card, always the best ad you remember while you're making all that money to please have some fun and go out. All right, slippery cards. The top card though is Shekinah, the presence of the divine feminine. At the center of everything, there is light, and I am that light. Beautiful. Let me pull this down. I'll put this here just because she's a goddess. All right. I'm going to put this one over here. 
I'll read that to you in one second. I just got to check on something. All right, sorry about that. Let me read you Shakina. Okay, it's not in alphabetical order. I thought I saw it, but let me see. 138. It says, when your soul selects this card, let me read it to you here. In the Zohar, the main sacred text in Kabbalah, the Shekinah is described as being a world within the world, as a bright radiance at the center of everything. All life on earth, all consciousness is a part of her light and is therefore sacred. The metaphysical theory of immanence is that the divine presence is manifested in the material world. So there isn't actually any matter, whether organic or inorganic, that isn't also a part of the divine. The Shekinah is light that inhabits your body, your cells, and is in the cells of all the people and objects you see around you. She is also about pure experience. She is the message, the truth, that there is a light at the center of everything that happens to us, both the good and the bad. And the Shekinah is the reminder that we are not just this body or this pain we might be going through or this confusing moment in our brief life. We are light. We are molecules of heaven in human form. And right now we can just know this. We can experience the light we are, and that can be enough. That can be the miracle and the answer we actually need. Not words or meaning, but simply and more profoundly pure radiant being. The soul voice meditation. Enter the heart and repeat this mantra. I am light. See what images or words arise. The intention. At the center of everything, there is light, and I am that light. Beautiful energy here. Let's put this over here. Put this over here. All right. Next, let's pull a Colette Baron Reed Wisdom of the Oracle Oracle card. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th, please. bottom clean it up on the top breathe all right a lot of elder older energy here so let's see this is the wisdom of the oracle I'll put these two to the side since we're done with those Number 29, okay. It says, essential meanings, patience, waiting, going slowly, wellness, meditation, trust. The Oracle's message, patience in all things is called for right now. What do you need to do when you're in a rush? Slow down, of course. Meditate and trust, breathe and repeat. Humans cannot exist without drawing breath. Now is the time to allow the life-giving element of air to replenish your body, your being, and your very essence. Stop to smell the roses, breathe in the sunlight, and release the darkness, and miracles will appear. The relationship message. Don't be in too much of a hurry right now. The heart needs time to open. Take a breath and let nature take its course. Release constriction and anxiety, for there is no need for tension. Savor the moment, and the waiting won't prove difficult. Your heart knows what the ego often resists learning. Ego, right? Patience pays off in deep and meaningful ways. Prosperity message. You have worked long and hard. Your dreams are coming to fruition, and you want to hurry things along. You are the slow one. You are the slow one moving languidly, yet still progressing right now in a rhythm dictated by your authentic nature. The essence of your dream. 
and the will of the universe. Slow and steady wins this race. You will indeed win if you relax. Stay the course, trust your intuition, and breathe. The protection message is inertia, laziness, and apathy are signs not of slowing down, but of decay and lifelessness. Wake up and do something to shake this off. Go outside for some air. A walk in nature will remind you that all of life is ensouled and magical. Get some exercise, move out of your head and into your body, and breathe in deeply. Each breath is precious. All right. Next, we're going to pull one crystal reading card. This will tell you what crystal that Sagittarius can work with for February 7th to the 28th, as well as telling you, look at that, you got two. The Divine Temple is a Master Teacher card, Source card, and then there's Aquamarine Communication. On the bottom, you got Agate Healthy Bodies. So again, this is speaking to taking care of your body and not staying at home and being kind of not moving and, you know, stagnant. So Aquamarine, quickly, I already know, it's related to your throat and your heart chakra that needs healing. Aquamarine is a stone that's going to help with the heart healing as well as helping you to communicate how you feel constructively, especially if you have to do something that revolves, uh, that involves speech arts, giving speeches, communication kind of work, your career, if it's in, uh, I don't see that, but I do see this Knight of Swords in the past, um, which is about, you know, speaking also. Your truth almost sometimes in a little bit of a um, aggressive manner okay so aquamarine will help you with your heart healing and to help you speak in a way that doesn't offend people but yet at the same time helps you express what you need to express in a very articulate way that um, makes you helps you to be understood by others okay as well as you know not offending or not stepping on toes but at the same time not having to sacrifice any of the meaning because you still get to express what you need to express in the most eloquent articulate intelligent way so that's aquamarine all right so i'm gonna put this over here and i'll put this over here aquamarine okay put this over here oh, that blocks it okay, i'm gonna move this and then you've got the Divine Temple, the Source card here, Master Teacher card. Let me read that for you. And it says, it's related to all the chakras. Okay, so this is throat and heart, but this is all the chakras. So really, they're saying focus more on the throat and heart is needed, but all chakras need alignment and healing. So the colors are clear and smoky quartz and sometimes amethyst. The crystal meaning is connecting to the thought, everything ever thought, ever happening, ever happened. Okay, in time, ever. That's the Akashic Records. Uh, connecting to the love and wisdom of the universe, group bonding and connection, reaching deep states of meditation. So it says... Source is one of the most powerful cards in the deck and has shown up today to remind you that you are forever deeply connected to the divine source of the universe. This source energy is your ever-flowing supply of love, wisdom, healing, abundance, and support in your life. Know that you are deeply connected to and at one with this divine light at all times. It is the infinite source of power and energy in your life. You may have been feeling low of energy and disconnected from your source of late, and this card is a reflection and sign that the gates have opened and this universal energy is available to you more than ever. You are being guided to work with the devas of the Divine Temple Crystal to strengthen and awaken this connection to a deeper level. Take a moment to go within and reflect on your life and current situations as you sit in silence with your crystal card. So then it says, um, breathe deeply as you receive this download of cosmic energy and allow it to dissolve any barriers you may have put in place to block this magical light. Like this four of pentacles where you're closed off and blocking, okay? This is a card of blocking. Know that you are deeply loved and held in this vibration at all times and make sure to align with it frequently. Attracting this card today is a positive sign that the divine source is behind you and supports your choices and decisions at this time. Beautiful. 
Next, I'm going to pull this very adventurous, exciting deck. It's called Sacred Traveler by Denise Lynn. Can we get one card, please, for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 7th to the 28th? bottom we've got journey by moonlight believe in magic but the top card that we're going to read is fogged in go slow take time all right so this says card meaning even if you can't see what's around that next corner go forward slowly and gently you are safe. When you take the time to go slowly, new perceptions emerge that you can't see if you're moving fast. Move away from the rapid pace of everyday life and step into the majesty of stillness. Resist the impulse to go ahead with your first instinct. Take time to tune into your deeper intuition. Power is born in those times when you relax into the present moment. The sacred traveler wants you to know. Sometimes the mist and fog are so thick that the traveler feels uncertain about everything. Where am I going? What am I meant to do? Why can't I see what's ahead? However, it's in those moments of unknowing that the deepest and most profound answers to life's big questions can emerge. The secret is to traverse slowly and carefully so as not to fall off the path. Be careful. Proceed with caution in all the things as you sense the best direction. Listen to the whisperings of your soul. Trust your inner voice. All right, so finally, we've got the Love Oracle cards. We're going to read Romance Angels first. So this is for Love and Romance. Can we see what's going on for Sagittarius and Love and Romance, please, for February 7th to the 28th? What guidance can we give to Sagittarius for the 7th to the 28th? retreat you got a lot of spiritual cards here you got um breathe the divine temple the source and and then this retreat card so let's just talk about that for a second i'm gonna move this over here on the bottom you have pay attention to the red flags the signs are cautioning you that's just speaking to somebody you might be dealing with who doesn't act quite right with others, but they're just great with you. And it's saying you don't have to break up with them if you're in a relationship with them or anything, but um, having a conversation about that would be helpful. It speaks to kind of someone who's um, disrespectful with like, let's say if they go to a restaurant and the waitress or the waiter is, you know, there, they're kind of disrespectful. If it's someone who's, you know, talking to the valet for something like that, then they kind of have this kind of red flags about someone who doesn't treat people well if they're not of, you know, great benefit to them, basically. Retreat. The romance angels see that your love life blossoms as you spend time alone with your partner or by yourself. It appears that you've become confused or conflicted by other people's advice. It's time for you to disconnect so that you can better hear your own feelings and opinions. If you are in a partnership, spending time together apart from others will renew your commitment and take it to the next level. It sure does. Um, this could mean taking a vacation, going on a nature hike, enjoying a long drive, or turning off the phones and computer as you both enjoy a quiet afternoon at home. The painting on this card also indicates a honeymoon, which could be the literal message, so there may be a deepening of commitment or a new serious relationship if you're currently single. This card may indicate an upcoming engagement, wedding, or renewal of vows. 
These activities are more meaningful as you spend time alone with your partner. If you're presently single, this card guides you to spend time by yourself, meditating upon your true feelings and thoughts. Be sure to take action based on any intuitive guidance. This strengthens your energy, which helps you rapidly attract and manifest your loving partner. All right, so they're talking about um, when it says breathe, more of a spiritual kind of energy. Um, these two cards here. Okay. And it's saying when you do that, it's, this is a complete, it looks like it's a new relationship. This new relationship that's coming into your life, look at it. It's the Ace of Pentacles, it's a seed, the completion of the Pentacles, which would be the Ten of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles in this deck. Traditionally, the King of Pentacles in the regular tarot. And that's about somebody, well, honestly, when I see Pentacles and Cups, especially with this new relationship being an Ace of Pentacles, I feel like uh, that's more towards your community, your roots, somebody from within your community, um, your background, same, you know, kind of this kind of deep roots kind of energy, okay? Um, and you, this new relationship comes into your life. You're still blocked, right? But you, you have to work on that. This is saying meditation, retreat, breathing exercises, being able to communicate better, heart healing from past wounds, then the divine temple, which is speaking to overall healing of all, and alignment of all your chakras. And this is going to be around you, this new relationship. Okay, something that you've been wishing for, and it comes true with the happily ever after card of the Ten of Cups. I remember we talked about the Queen of Cups and somebody leaving a sad situation. And this is the rite of passage, a reunion, marriage, all those wonderful, stable, solid foundation, and the sun, right? Okay, so let's get one last oracle card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for love and romance. This is a very happy reading. You guys get the best readings, you and Libra. All right, this is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February. Seven to twenty-eight, please. One last card. All right. On the bottom, we've got demonstrate love. Find out what is important to the people you love and act on it. Straightforward, but we're not reading that card. We've got love who you are. You are a divine and wonderful person, deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. So let's just put this over here for now. These are very short. Number eight. And it says, be your own advocate. Believe in yourself. Love who you are. And the energy of self-love will help you to realize your dreams. When was the last time you gave yourself a pat on the back or acknowledged that you love yourself? Working on a good relationship with yourself will enable you to have a positive relationship with others. But fear not, Sagittarius, because regardless, the cards are excellent for your love life. You know, the general reading was kind of boring. It was kind of like, you know, regular mundane kind of issues and conflicts. But this is exciting. What's coming into your life? This new relationship. You right now, you've been this energy of blocking, unreceptive, closed off, okay? It feels like this family or some kind of relationship that you're already like a non-romantic kind of situation here that's been keeping you occupied until this comes in. You right now, you're in a very, it looks like you could be in demand, but you're just blocking. You're not receptive because of something that's happened in the past. The Wounded Warrior card is here. It's your challenge to get over your past issues. Around you, there is a true partnership, a divine love soulmate connection. Soulmate meaning not like one person in this universe that's right for you. I mean, past life connection, you have many of them, right? We have countless past life connections. But somebody that, you know, has a little bit of a closer connection possibly because of love, past love maybe. So this is a soulmate connection card. Great partnership. Two people. Look, they're dressed. They're even dressed like they're at a wedding, aren't they? 
looks just like this Queen of Cups over here. They purposely, you know, made them made the Queen of Cups dressed in kind of like a wedding finery. So this is around you. And then you've got, look at all these beautiful cards. The Two of Cups, True Love, A New Relationship, Star, the Hope card, okay? Major Arcana, Hope and Faith, Wish card, okay? And then the Dream Come True. Look at how she's offering this up to this. And it looks like it's around the time of the, you know, is it waning? Waning moon? I don't I don't know. Anyways, looks fantastic. Only thing is it's saying your communication and your heart healing. Okay. Communicating well, communicating better. Need to take a break of retreat, breathing exercises, meditation. But your chakras and stuff need aligning. As well as heart healing and throat chakra healing to be able to communicate effectively with heart and compassion and to help others understand you better. And then you have Shekinah, the presence of the Divine Feminine. At the center of everything, there is light, and I am that light. That was your reading, Sag. Beautiful reading, as usual. It's always money and great job, success, career, or you get you know true love, true love, true love. So we're tapping into that energy again of true love. This is a true love reading, happily ever after. And with that, I am going to bed. Bye, Sag. Talk to you soon.